in here, you come in. It's really quiet in here tonight. Not like the other night when you were in here. Good evening, Flo. I can't believe that. Half the town must be over at the old Starlight Drive-In movie theater. They are giving it one more run this summer before the land is repurposed for development. The place is packed. It's a shame to lose such a unique tradition, especially for New Jersey. Oh, why do you say that? Ah, come on. A place like this old diner and drive-in movies might not be unique to New Jersey. But over the years, they certainly did thrive here. In fact, the very first drive-in theater was right over on Admiral Wilson Boulevard in Camden. Hey, since it's so quiet here, do you want to uh, go on a quick adventure? <laughs> we, Mr. Bob, whatever do you have in mind? Okay, look. I invented this time machine walking cane, and I'm able to transport us back to June of 1933. Come on, let's go. You are listening to The World According to Mr. Bob, a historical fiction educational podcast based on true life events. Some sounds and language may be inappropriate. Listener discretion is advised. Oh my goodness, what was that? Where are we? Mr. Bob, look at all these antique cars. Are we at some kind of car show? I'll give you the details later. But for now, look around. Anything familiar? Like that stepped cinder block retaining wall where the movie screen is hanging. Yes! As a child, I always wondered what that was. We would pass it as we made our way to the Ben Franklin Bridge when we went into Philadelphia. Wow, I never knew. Shh, shh, shh. There are the owners. That's Richard Milton Hollingshead Jr. and his dad. Let's uh, walk over to the ticket booth. Just act like you know what you're doing. And listen. Yes, sir, that'll be 25 cents for the car, an additional 25 cents for each person. You have two adults and two children? Oh, so your total comes to a buck 25. Oh, thank you very much and proceed to the parking attendant for direction. Oh, and please dim your headlights! Son, I can't keep up this pace. They just keep coming. See, Dad? I told you it would work. Where else can you bring the entire family for a night out to a movie and not worry about the kids disturbing the neighbors? If they get cranky, you can simply tuck them to bed in the back seat. You can even bring them dinner. Good evening, sir. I have two adults, four children, and one dog. Well, sir, tonight is your lucky night. Since you just got the last spot in the drive-in, I'm only going to charge you for your family. The car and the dog get in for free, but you have to promise me you'll hit the snack bar. As soon as we park. Thank you so much. Son, I applaud your ambition, but we are the Wiz Auto Products Company. We're in the automotive accessory business. We sell greases, oils, and car polish, not the automotive entertainment industry. But Dad, that's the beauty. No one else is doing this, and look around. This place is packed. There's obviously a market for it. I'd say people are loving this. Hold on, Flo. We are going to jump 30 years ahead to 1963. Mr. Fox! Okay, Mr. Bob, enough. What was that all about? The spinning and the flashing colors, and you call that a landing? And now, where did you find all these classic cars? Like I said, all I have to do is set my time machine walking cane to whatever place in time in history. And through the miracle of science, we are able to transport back to those exact coordinates. <laughs> it, it can be a little rough. I'm still working on that. Are you, are you okay? Yeah, sure. But now where are we? We just jumped ahead 30 years. And to the other side of town. We are at the newest drive-in movie theater on a Saturday night. And look around. It doesn't get any more Americana than this. 
Can you believe Diane is here with Mark? I know she was sitting real close to him in his fancy Impala with its top down, and as soon as they got their spot, the top went back up. Good evening, ladies. Is there something I can get for you? We're running a special tonight only. A hot dog and a Coke for 50 cents. That's great, sir, but could I have a large tub of buttered popcorn, a box of milk duds, and a large Coke? And I just saw half the football team climb out of a trunk. Really? It's a dollar a car night, so they didn't even have to do that. How funny. Hey, Mr. Pa, I did see that car over there that just pulled in. I was wondering why they were opening that trunk. Oh, come on, Flo. That's the oldest trick in the book. The young teenager and his date come to the drive-in after dark, get their parking spot, then unload the trunk full of three of their friends who didn't pay and quickly run into the back seat under the cover of darkness before anyone spots them. It's glass. Hopefully the movie starts soon. The car next to us is full of little kids and they're just running around like crazy people. Oh good, the previews are starting. Let's go and get back to the car. Wow, I vividly remember coming here with my folks as a young girl. We would pull in just like them before dusk to get the best spot. Mom and Dad would let my brother and me roam wild until the movie started. Then we all climbed back into the car that was parked in these little earth mounds that raised the front of everyone's car. It was great. That way you could always see over the car in front of you. Those concentric circular mounds actually created the parking aisles a sort of amphitheaters for cars. It was an ingenious concept, and it was unique enough to earn the young Hollingshead a U.S. patent. I used to love those squawky gray speakers you had to hang in the inside of your car window. I remember one time when my dad forgot to hang the speaker back up after the movie ended. As he drove away, the speaker pulled and shattered the driver's side window. It made such a mess. And you know, we never went back after that. Well, Mr. Bob, this classic waitress has got to get back to the diner. Can you make that happen now? Sure can, Flo. Hold on. Okay, okay. I find if I keep my knees bent that re-entry is not so bad. It's like skiing without the snow. (laughs) And look around. Nobody here even missed us. Too wild. What other tricks do you have up your sleeve, Mr. Bob? You know, the young Hollingshead went on to get a patent for his invention, but not for what you would think. The uniqueness that he patented was for the way he raised the fronts of the cars so that everyone behind could see over. It was genius. But enough talk. I'm starving. I can't believe we went to all these drive-ins and never once hit the snack bar. Uh, What do you got that's good? What's good? It's all good. What do you feel like? A burger? A turkey club? How about breakfast? You know you can order breakfast no matter what time of day. And we have the best coffee this side of the Delaware River. All right. At this time of night, a couple eggs and a piece of toast sounds pretty good. Can I get a cup of your renowned coffee with cream and sugar? Order up! Can I get an Adam and Eve on a raft and a blonde with sand? That's hysterical. I love that you folks have your own language. Hey, Flo, you have one more trip in you tonight? Let's go back and find out how diners got their start. Mr. Bob, I don't know. All of a sudden, I've got a counter full of customers. I shouldn't be... Okay, Flo. We just went back to 1872, and that guy over there is Walter Scott. He just parked his horse-drawn buggy out in front of this factory in Providence, Rhode Island. Scott outfitted his buggy so he could sell sandwiches and hot coffee to the shift workers. These factories operated 24-7 with three shifts of workers every day. When the second and third shifts broke for dinner, there was nowhere for the workers to go for a meal. At that time of day, everything was closed. All Scott had to do was make sure he was there with his lunch wagon when that dinner whistle blew. J. 
gentlemen, step right up and get yourself a sandwich and a cup of coffee. Why lock that heavy lunchbox with a cold sandwich and maybe something to drink? When for just two bits, you can enjoy one of my meatball sandwiches and a cup of my world famous coffee. No need to pack a cold dinner anymore, gentlemen. I'll be here every night for your meal break. Hey, Joe, check this guy out. It's time for our 6.30 dinner break, and he's out front with a horse and buggy selling meatballs and hot coffee. Wow, what a great idea. At this hour, everything else is closed. Look at that line already. We better get in before he sells out. Hey, maybe we should look into this lunch wagon biz and maybe our ticket out of this factory. Hey, Flo, hang on. Let's spring ahead to the early 1900s and find Jerry O'Mahony. Okay, Mr. Bob, now where are we? We are in Bayonne, New Jersey. And that guy over there is Jerry O'Mahony. And his company has been mass producing some 2,000 diner cars and shipping them all over the country. You know, Joe, it's hard to fathom it's been 25 years since we left that factory in Providence. Moving to New Jersey to build these stainless steel behemoths with Jerry was the best move I ever made. Yeah, Frank, did you see at the time clock? Jerry just posted that we shipped a 2,000 diner car. I still can't believe how fancy these things have gotten over the years. And here in Jersey, they're everywhere. I guess yous and me's, we must do a pretty good job, huh? Yeah, Joe. Remember those first cars we built? They were so narrow, the cook was right behind the counter. At that time, shipping the diners on railroad flatbeds was the only way to get them around. So the diner couldn't be any bigger than a railroad car. Hey, can I help you, folks? Hey, that guy just spotted us. He's coming this way. Come on, we gotta go. Mr. Bob, that re-entry is way better than any roller coaster I've ever been on. I know, but you get used to it. So, it wasn't long after that, New Jersey became known as the diner capital of the world, with over 20 manufacturers spread across the state. The competition for customers led the diners to evolve into those shiny stainless steel icons with their equally flashy neon signs that we know today. They are truly works of visual art. Mr. Bob, I've been working in this greasy spoon since the early 70s, and this place is truly one of comfort. Look around. We have policemen, businessmen, college students, bikers, just this bizarre cross-section of society. We're open 24-7, and I have never chased anyone out for hanging out too long. After school, the teenagers come in for a soda and a couple songs in the jukebox. I've literally watched generations grow up here. Besides, where else are you going to go and have your waitress call you, hon? I know, right? Oh, my goodness. Look at the time. Those couple of side trips have really thrown me off schedule. I got to run. Thanks for the grub. And of course, your company. Oh no, it's I who should be thanking you. I haven't had that much fun in years. Y'all come back now here. The World According to Mr. Bob is produced by Bob Staniszewski and Adam Staniszewski. Recorded and mixed at Crooked Lane Sound in Cherry Hill, New Jersey by audio engineer and sound designer, Adam Staniszewski. Episode number five of season two was written by Bob Staniszewski and is titled Diners and Drive-Ins. It features Victoria Bizgare as Flo, the waitress. DJ Kaczynski and Nick Ursamarso are Mr. Hollingshead Sr. and Jr. Brett Slavin performs Walter Scott. Daniel Flynn and Jack Dager are Factory Frank and Joe. Jim Lilly is the drive-in customer. And Casey Talbot and Christine Falstick are the teenage girls. Mr. Bob's graphics were designed by J.R. Farrell at Promotional Graphics Doylestown, PA. The theme songs are provided by Doug Maxwell and Ease Jammy Jams. For a full list of character and musical credits, please check out our website, theworldaccordingtomrbob.com. And while you're on the internet, please follow our Facebook page for updates. Hit the like and subscribe buttons on our YouTube channel. 
And if you want to advertise or sponsor the show, please email us at worldofmrbob at gmail.com. I'm Danielle Byrne, announcer extraordinaire. Thank you for listening, and please tune in to the next exciting episode of The World According to Mr. Bob. This has been a Moon Ranger production.